Hey everyone, I'm Andrew Hockrottle, and this is Office Hours. Today, we're going on a field trip, and that's right, you're coming with me. So, let's go and learn how to use Lightroom on the go. All right, we made it into the car and we're going to one of my favorite places today. Uh, and it's actually a park. We're gonna be looking for some flowers and kind of be out on the go. We're gonna take pictures and edit pictures, but first we need our sun hat. Now we're good to go. All right, we've arrived at Fairmont Park. Uh, it's right down the street from my house. It's an awesome park. It's got a lake, it's got a play structure, all kinds of stuff. So I like to come down here and maybe we'll grab some color inspiration and work on uh, maybe some retouching, some masking, and really bring the most out of this beautiful park. Uh, I have my iPad Pro here that I am working with. You can also do this on any mobile device. So if you want to, follow along, grab a picture of your own, fire up your iPad, open it on your phone in Lightroom, and let's get started. All right, so there's a beautiful setup happening uh, right over there. So we're gonna head over there and uh, I think it'll be cool to try to capture some of the cranes that are there that are in white and then some of the dark background, see if we can get some good contrast going. Um, so let's go. All right, we've made it to our spot. I've got my handy dandy iPad here and we're gonna take a picture very quickly by just clicking on the bottom right hand corner where that little camera is. It's gonna allow us to use our location. It'll actually use that in the future if we wanna find a specific location. So there's you. Hi everybody. Let's go ahead and turn around and find the perfect photo. So I want a little bit of this hanging branch in the frame, but I wanna focus on the ducks and maybe get a little more sky. So I'm gonna bend down here and wanna get those cars out. We'll click right there and you'll see that we can preview our photo right there by clicking on the bottom left. So that looks pretty good to me. We're gonna swipe down and then hit that X in the top left corner. From there, we can simply select this photo in our Lightroom Photos and it will open up so that we can edit it however we need to edit. Uh, what I wanna do to start out with is we're gonna work with some masking. Now there's some great masking tools that are newer that we'll be using in our next adventure. Uh, but right now I'm gonna go into masking and show you how to do things manually for little tweaks here and there. I'm gonna click on the plus and from here we can do a brush, a linear or radiant, radial gradient or even a color range, right? So let's start out with a color range because the water's very brown here and I wanna fix that. So I'm gonna click on color range I'm gonna hit create and then find this kind of brown color. So you can see there that we're trying to select mostly just the water brown. It gets pretty nasty. So that looks good. It looks like it's selecting a lot of that brown. It's got some of the trees as well, um, but that's fine. We'll change that in the future. So from there, we can refine and it's gonna grab more if we go to the right or less if you go to the left, which is maybe what we want. And we're gonna hit apply. So now we have a mask created. Uh, we can refine that, but you can see in that bottom left-hand corner, or bottom right-hand corner, that it is creating that mask for us. From here, we can go into color, and I want this to be much more blue. So as you see, as I drag this, it will make that much more blue. We can also change the hue, and that hue we want to move to that nice little blue, shift it over just a little bit. We can add a color, which is gonna be uh, that nice blue right there. That works for me. And so we've already made this lake a little more blue. We also can change the exposure of this if we want it a little bit lighter. Uh, I think I want more contrast in there and let's definitely bring up the highlights to make that water really glow. Uh, we also, let's change the color one more time and just take that saturation down a little bit so that it's not as blue. So we've changed the water and it's gotten that nice blue, but we've messed up a lot of the sky and a lot of that top part. So what we can do is we're gonna create another mask by clicking right here on that plus. We're gonna do a linear gradient this time. 
and the linear gradient is going to allow us to click and drag, just hold and drag, and we're going to drag down from the top down. This will allow us to change a lot of those colors and a lot of the augmentations that we made um, initially with that were picked up in the water and picked up in the trees. So I want the temperature to be a lot warmer because it is, uh, I want it to feel like a sunny, bright day. We're going to increase that saturation a little bit because I do want it to have that pop of color. And the light, we're going to bring that exposure up just so we have a little more of those trees, right? And I'm okay that the sky is a little burned out right now. Uh, we'll adjust that in a second. The color, I definitely want to be a little more green, right? To get that contrast. And that's looking pretty good for the top there. And the water at the bottom is looking good and blue. Now let's focus on maybe some of the dark in the foreground. So we can come in here and change a radio gradient. Radio gradient is just gonna create kind of a circle or ellipse. When we hit create, I can click and drag this out, and you can see it's just grabbing that gradient. You can pinch and drag to zoom out, and then I want this to be a little more, there we go, over that side. So from here, I'm gonna adjust my light and bring that exposure up just a little bit so that we have some nice contrast. The highlights, I want to come down because that is hitting a little bit too hot. And those shadows, I want to come up. I want to bring some light to this area. And I think that that's looking pretty good to me. So the center is looking a little bit wonky. And I think that doing the color range picked up too much of the other pieces. So what we're going to do here is we are going to go ahead and actually delete our color range. So we can select right here the color range. You can see I can click on that mask down in the bottom right. And what we're going to do is we're just going to tap on this and we're going to hit delete. So I tapped and held on that and we're going to hit delete and that will delete that for us. So all of our other masks are there, but the water, um, we're capturing a little more of the trees right here that I wanted. And that way the water, um, we're not really messing too much with those trees. So this radio gradient's a little bit too far for me. So I can click and drag and we can actually move this up so that those trees in the background, we can do our own gradient on. But we do need to deal with the water. So we're gonna hit plus, and this time we're gonna use a brush. And a brush allows us to kind of draw over the area. So we can very easily draw over the area that we want to uh, kind of augment. Now, that wasn't quite what I wanted. I need to adjust the size of my brush. So we're gonna delete that. We're gonna make a new brush. And from here, you can hold and drag up and it will show you how big that brush is. And the softness, you also can increase or decrease, right? So let's keep it semi-soft, but then let's click and drag here. And we're gonna be able to cover a lot of this water and then kind of just augment it into that blue. So again, coming into the color, switching that into a nice blue color. Ooh, this is looking good. A little green in there. Shift the hue to a little bit more of that blue and then let's augment this light. A little bit darker, a little more contrast. Lights and the blacks down. All right, and let's change the saturation. So a little less saturation. There we go. So that water is looking a little more blue and that looks great to me. So we're gonna hit done and that looks good. Now, here's the secret. To really make your photos come together, putting edit on top of all of those masks will really start to bring it together. So we're gonna click on light here, and this is gonna edit the entire photo, not just the pieces of our masks. So when we come into color, we can change the temp and make this much warmer. And you can see already, changing the temperature will bring that photo together with all the different uh, masks that we've created. So the tint, I want to be a little more on the purple side. We want that kind of vintage exposed film look. The vibrance, I want to come a little bit up. I want a little bit more of that kind of pop. And then we'll come into our light and start making augmentations. I want the whole thing to be a little bit brighter on the exposure, but the highlights are too hot. So I'm gonna bring those highlights down as well as the whites, bring those down a little bit. All right, so it's starting to look a little more balanced here. And I'm gonna come into the effects. And the difference in effects is the texture is going to get a lot of the details and the clarity will get a lot of uh, the larger details. So if we increase the texture, you'll mostly see it in the trees, but the clarity, you'll see it in the whole photo, right? It's getting really contrasty there. Um, we do wanna add some grain to this. I always love adding grain to my photos. When we zoom in here, you can see that little bit of a vintage grain. 
And let's go ahead and check in the detail. We're gonna make this a little bit sharper just so we have a nice crisp image. There's a plane flying over me right now. This park is right next to an airport, which is another fun uh, detail to this tutorial. So what we can do is we're looking pretty good here. And if we want to see the before and after, it's actually very easy. All we have to do is click and hold on that photo. And you can see the before and after of when we started to where we finished. So it looks really, really good to me. Um, and I can go ahead and export this by just sharing. So I can click on that share in the top right and we can share two. We can send it to a friend, send it to a client. We can grab a link and that link will be accessible anywhere on the internet. We can invite people or we can even open this and edit in Photoshop. We can export it to the camera roll or export to files on your document as well. So this looks pretty good to me. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the final image. And there it is. Looks pretty good. I think we captured the park. Let's go ahead and walk around a little bit more, see what else we can capture in this park and see if we can do some quick edits on some photos. Let's go. All right, the most important thing to remember when you're getting creative and you're out and about, don't just look at your iPad the whole time. Go out and have some fun. Let's do it. All right, so we have another setup here that I think is gonna be interesting. Uh, the colors on this playground I think are really cool. So let me get my spot. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're really gonna focus on increasing some contrast and getting a great kind of architectural abstract photo. So again, clicking on that camera is gonna allow us to check in at Fairmont Park. And then I'm gonna try to grab an interesting, oh, there's just bird poop right there. So if we can get an interesting look, maybe through these bars, that looks pretty cool. So from there, we snap the photo. And once we have the photo, again, we can just tap to open. This is already looking pretty cool. It's got some fun lines and dimension to it. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I am going to import that. And we're gonna use that, uh, we're gonna use a filter actually, right off the bat. So let's go ahead and just click on our filters. Uh, oops, that's applying from previous. There we go, presets right there. And from here, we can kind of look and see what presets are available. Um, I think that we may want to start with something that is color, and let's do something that's vivid, right? That's gonna give us a nice pop. So that color's already starting in a right direction, but I am going to want to add some custom masking. So let's do the entire photo first. Oh, let's hit done. There we go. So it looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and change over so we can adjust some colors. So clicking on our adjustments right there, we can click on color. And if we want to, we can sample a white balance. Now I want the sky clouds to be the most white part. So over here under color where it says WB, that's white balance. We can tap on that little eyedropper and you'll see as I move around, oops, that is going to adjust the white balance of the photo. So as it gets into a darker spot, it's going to uh, really push it to uh, blue. But if we want the clouds to be nice and white, we're gonna set the clouds as the whitest part. So you just click and drag to make it the whitest part of that photo and it will balance the rest out for you. So we can do color grading here, which is what we want to look at. Uh, color grading is gonna allow us to really bring those colors out. Uh, it looks like our shadows here are mostly actually green, but some of them are dropping into a black. So with our shadows, we can click and drag so that they go into a more green place. And you can see there the before and after when I hit done here. So we can see, hold on, wait for it. There we go. The before and after with that color grading, it really brings those shadows into that green. So coming back into the color grading, we do want um, our highlights to maybe be a little bit more yellow right we want that bright kind of warm day so you can click on the highlights right up there and start to pull those to yellow and you can see that the sky is getting very yellow um, and we want that kind of look nice and warm from here we're going to go back and this is where we're just going to start playing around with some of our colors using masking so we're going to click on that mask hit the plus button 
and we are going to select color range. And that color range is going to be this yellow. And you can see that it actually grabbed all of those poles for us because it's a very distinct color. So we're gonna apply. And from there, we wanna to go to color and we're just gonna adjust that saturation to make it really, really yellow. Let's change the light and bring the exposure up on those. And look at that, we've got some really good brightness on those yellow poles. Now I wanna do the same with some of the green. So I can go ahead and do one more mask, hit plus and go to color range. And we're just gonna grab this green over here. Looks like it's also grabbing the tree. So I want a little bit less. And from there we can apply, come over to light, give it a little more exposure. And then we can come into color and give it that green tint. So it looks pretty good for a quick photo. We have some nice contrast. And if we wanted to see what this looks like in black and white, because I think it would be interesting, all you need to do is go to color, click on black and white. And there we go, we've got our black and white. We can come in and maybe adjust the contrast a little bit and then start playing around those shadows and highlights to really give us that high fidelity. And when you're working in black and white, I always like to come in here to our detail, add some contrast and then go to effects and add a ton of grain. I think grain looks really good when you get into that black and white. See those grains happening. So quick edit, very easy using those color selection tools um, and picking out and separating elements in your photos. Great job, let's find somewhere else. All right, that was a great visit to Fairmont Park. We're gonna go to one other place in downtown Riverside and that is Mariposa Avenue. Uh, it is a hallway, a streetway, an alleyway that has a whole bunch of butterflies on the wall. And I think it will make for a really good photo shoot, especially using some of the tools like select subject and select sky. So let's head on another adventure down to Mariposa Avenue. Okay, I said we were going to Mariposa Avenue and I lied. We stopped at the uh, courthouse because it's just a really, really cool spot. Um, and so let's go ahead and hop in to Lightroom. I took a photo and imported it because I wanna show you how to adjust the sky. If you click right here on masking on the right, you can actually adjust the sky by clicking on this plus and then going to select sky. We're gonna hit create and it will find the sky for us and detect it. And then we can actually change that sky. So you see it is selected the sky. We can come into color, make it much more blue. And maybe we want to adjust the exposure on that, make it a little bit brighter, add some contrast. And so without having to mask, it's super easy for us to adjust that sky. We'll hit done and you can click and hold to see the before and after it's just editing that sky. So quick little stop. Let's continue over to Metaposa Avenue. Let's do it. I'm a beautiful butterfly. Uh, all right, so the audio here is terrible. There's air conditioning happening, but that's the magic is we're on the go. And if we need to, we're just walking by something, we can very quickly open our iPad, take some pictures, and then take them on the go to edit somewhere else. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go off camera, take some pictures, and we'll head over maybe to City Hall to edit the photos together. Let's do it. We made a wish and the air conditioners turned off. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to take a picture and select the subject. We're gonna to try to make the brick wall black and white and then make that giant uh, butterfly into bright color. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the photo button. There you are again. And let's go down to this blue one. I think this blue one is really pretty and these colors will contrast really well with a black and white background. So just clicking right here, we grab our photo and again, you can come in and you'll see that it has already imported right there. So all we need to do is click, it will import that photo. And from there we can use a new tool, which is select subject. We're gonna click on the masking on the right, it's just a little circle. Click on that plus and hit select subject. What it's gonna do is it's gonna find everything in that photo that feels like it's its own thing, right? This, this is great for portraits. Here we're using it a little bit differently. So you see it found the butterfly. We can click and hold and then go to duplicate and inverse mask. That's gonna inverse the mask, so now we have the wall selected, everything behind it. We're gonna go into color. We're gonna pull that saturation all the way down. And now we've got a nice black and white on that wall. We can increase the contrast, maybe we want less exposure. Let's really go into the effects here 
and change the texture, the clarity. Ooh, that looks great. So now with that selected, we can actually select underneath the mask of just the butterfly. This is gonna allow us to change the exposure, to change everything about this butterfly. I do want a lot of contrast on this. I want the highlights to be bright and the shadows to be dark. And the color is really where we're gonna play around. We're gonna to try to pop it out with a ton of color by increasing that saturation, right? And it feels like maybe we want it to be a little bit brighter. There we go, that's looking gorgeous. So that looks really, really good. Um, and it does look like those shadows are pulling in a little bit too much color. So with that, I can just pull these shadows all the way down. It's gonna really knock those out for us. So an easy way, again, to select a subject, we can click and hold here and see the before and after. So look at the difference, that's before and that's after. So huge difference, it's getting a little bit windy here, but you can see how easily you can do on the go to select something. And again, if we wanted to do this with a photo, we could bring the color back off the background and really bring out our model. Um, it's a really great way to select things within a scene. And there we go, here is our final photo at Mariposa Avenue, uh, which I think is actually called, oh, Mar Mariposa a Alley. It's also called the Mayor's Butterfly Garden. I don't know, but um, let's take off and I wanna show you one more thing. All right, so those sick moves that you just saw were actually uh, a video, as you can see. This is all a video, but we can actually edit that right in Lightroom. Let's say that I want to tone it, I want to cut it down, make a little change. I can simply click and add from my camera roll and click on that video. And from here, I can edit this video if I want to crop it down. So let's hit play and see what happens. All right, so it looks like there's a lot of setup that I had here, right? I was kind of playing around, getting all the way up, setting up the shot. And so what I want to do is I want to crop this video down. I can click on crop and then just drag all the way to where I'm walking down the stairs, which is right there. So it looks pretty good to me. And then at the end, I know that I stopped it. And so let's grab right as I go out of frame right there. So I can hit done and it's going to crop that for me. And now when I hit play, Wow, look at those sick moves. Pretty cool. Now let's say that I wanna add in a little bit of color and color correct this. So let's increase the exposure. You can play around and just like on photos, you can make all those augmentations here in Lightroom with video now. Let's increase the contrast. Um, and maybe we don't want to mess around with it individually, right? We could do the color, change the temperature. Maybe we wanna use a preset, right? So we can click on presets here and let's go ahead and do creative. That could be fun. And scrolling through, we can click and it will show all of these different presets that are happening here. So let's grab, um, let's do portraits. Let's figure out one of these. Mm, those are for skin. Let's do color, why not? Let's do color and let's do a high contrast. Ooh, that looks cool. So we have high contrast. We can come back here and maybe we want to hit done to commit that. And on effects, we can include a vignette. Do a little vignette on there, hit okay. And now our video is fully color corrected. You can see all those colors are applied, all those adjustments are applied. Everything as if we were editing a photo is now in this video. You can click on the share button in the top right and we can download this, we can share it to someone, or we can just save it into our Creative Cloud files. And the cool thing about Lightroom is that it is syncing to Lightroom across the board. If I went back to my desk, we'd be able to edit this in Lightroom on desktop. So pretty cool features here. And I think that's it. Uh, let's go ahead and throw to Nick and see what Nick is up to. You know what? I've been doing email all day. I think it's time to do something a little more creative and I'm gonna take it outside with my iPad. Let's go.
All right guys, so I'm gonna show you a little bit about what I did with Lightroom. We took a few pictures in and around town and uh, at the local park, and we're gonna show you how to do Lightroom on the go. I'm gonna be using an iPad, um, sitting down in the park, and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna edit them. Hey guys, so I'm out <clears throat> at my local park and uh, got a few photos loaded up. We asked you guys to do the same, so hopefully you guys have gone out and done some some cool photography and uh, we're going to show you a few things that we could do in Lightroom and what I have here are a few pictures that we can start with that I took as we kind of walked around and uh, here's a quick one that was literally like right over there um, some of these buildings that are outside uh, of my house and I'm just going to kind of look into it really quick and start messing around with stuff so I'm trying to figure a few things out here um, we're obviously getting some things with help, but I'm just going to continue on here and like mess around with our exposure. Then I'm going to get some contrast here a little bit more. We're going to take the highlights, I think, just down a little bit. Maybe increase the shadows. Let's see. Actually, that looks pretty cool. And then our whites. Let's see what we can do here. Nice. The blacks always help crisp things up, specifically with things like this one here, where you've got the windows with the little window panes. Anything like that, it's gonna help intensify a little bit as well. So in colors, temperature, let's see. Ooh, we can turn it a little bit ice blue, but I wanna go after a little bit of a retro vibe, even though it's quite modern when it comes to what we've got here. So let's see, we've got tint. We can move this around a little bit here. And vibrance. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm looking for. All right, saturation, I think, ooh, we're gonna keep it right around there just to make sure. Now, when we go into color mix, one of the cool things here is we can actually specify specific colors and really mess around with it a little bit more. So I'm gonna go right into that blue and see if we can kind of turn that more greenish. And you can see just a tiny bit of color there changing. But if I go all the way to blue, we get a little bit more of that reflection in the window, which I kind of wanted to do. Then we're gonna hit, let's see, I'm gonna try to get those yellows down a little bit and see what, there we go. Okay, that looks pretty cool. And then the luminance, let's see what that can do. That kind of helps bring it back to a little bit more realistic vibe. All right, I'm gonna get into edits. Now I wanna add in a bit more texture into this as well. We could do that here. And our clarity, let's see, I'm gonna bring it down a little bit, just a touch. Because again, if we're going for something a little bit on the old side, I would love to try giving that clarity a bit, little bit less. Then on the dehaze, see what that does. Ooh, look at that. That's kind of really affecting it a little bit as well too. And then vignette, I love this idea of kind of like warming the edges a little bit, but also too, sometimes what's interesting is going in the opposite direction kind of does a unique thing too. I think we're usually so used to going over here and really kind of punching up the uh, vignette but just for now you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna kind of give this a little bit more here and lighten those images just a bit midpoint you can see what that does as well that's kind of helping clear it clear it up a little bit more there uh, feather let's see what we can do that kind of blurs it a bit and I don't want to do that too much so let's look at optics optics gives you a few things here as well that you can play around with so we have in here uh, a few things we can enable the lens correction and you can see what that's doing it's kind of like bulging it in the middle there you can see it slims it down there as well and then the remove CA not exactly sure what that does but here's what what I wanted to get to this is the geometry so what's neat here is you can really kind of mess around with stuff here so watch what happens when I go with the vertical you can see what it's doing is it's imagining if you had this photo in real life and you can kind of change the plane that it was on. So here with horizontal, I can do the same. I can kind of try to get a unique angle. So what I'm gonna to try to do is here, I'm gonna kind of fatten it up a little bit with aspect, okay? And then I think it's this one here, where was it? Scale, I can obviously rescale it there and get that. And then let's go back to vertical. I want to get this a little bit more dramatic of an angle. So notice as I move it over like that, I'm getting a bit more there. Now I'm going to go back to scale, make this a little bit bigger, and then that way I can kind of get this to be in the frame perfect. And I've got this whole new geometry to the actual piece that I kind of like. So I think to me that's looking really, really kind of cool. Nicely done here as well. Um, as far as other stuff, I really like the vibe of this where it is. 
If we want, we can obviously go to presets and things like that and see what else we can do. But here's a great kind of nice big image of it to see how it looks. And then uh, let's see what else we can explore. So we've got our presets here that are premium, recommended, you name it. So just to have some fun and say like, you know, we've done something cool here that we like, but let's play around with it a little bit. Let's look through here. We've got portraits, we've got auto retro. So I'm gonna just click on that and see what we can do. Let's see what a few of these look like. Definitely brings that back to, that looks like an old Instamatic picture that like my dad took in the 70s. Look at that thing, really cool. Ooh, that's kind of nice as well. But look at this one. That's really cool as well. You got some great, great things here to mess with, which is really, really cool. So I'm gonna hit done there. Let's go back to those presets. Where were they? Here we go. All right. So we've got style and vintage. I wanna click on that as well. Let's click here. Now, don't forget, we have those little sliders that we can move to now. This is like a complete new thing. So we have sliders per preset. I'm gonna take this one, slide it up a bit more here. That looks cool. We'll go to this one as well. Ooh, yeah, I like where that's going. So now we're getting a really cool dated and aged look. And I definitely wanna make sure we get that one as well to show you that you can actually mess around with those sliders within there, which is just very, very cool to go to. So we've got a fun little kind of new one here that we like. Let's take a look at it and see. We can zoom in and see that we got a really nice aged, kind of vintage look throughout here as well. We still got some stuff that are that's looking really good as well. And then um, you can look around and just see how everything else has kind of worked. What I like about particularly architecture and pictures like this is I can really zoom into things that you technically can't do when you're just looking at the building from, from just down from the street. So I love getting in there and seeing what else you can do, which is really, really nice. Um, so that's the first one I wanted to mess around with. The second one we took was this one here of this flower coming out of a uh, bush here that I found just walking up to the park as well. And we can do some really cool things as well here. For this one, I think what I'll do is try more of the presets and see what we can find that would be really kind of neat as well. So we're in nature, we're looking up things here. We've got travel, we've got urban architecture, we've got creative food. Uh, let's see what else we can kind of scroll through and see what might be neat here. We've got portraits. Uh, I'm thinking like landscape or something kind of cool. So there we go. Let's go into landscape. Here's a few that we can kind of mess with here. So this one, really nice, brings up a nice brightness. Click on the little level again and I can really pump up the vividness here and see how that looks. That's the LN05, which kind of looks pretty cool. But I think this is a little too subtle. I wanted to find something a bit more dramatic. So maybe what we'll do is we'll go into futuristic. Let's see what we can find here and see. Oh yeah, like look at this, look at the leaves and how cool that has established some kind of like super, super rich green. And even the red within the flower got the same thing as well. So we got some fun stuff that we can mess with there. Um, I always love to kind of like close that out here. Let's see, oh, done, perfect. Go back to this and really get in there and see. You can see like, isn't it amazing what these cameras can pick up when it comes to the detail? Just beautiful, it looks really, really nice there as well. So again, I've got all those controls that I can go to. We can take this and basically rotate it if we want and notice how it kind of does an auto crop to the corners there. One thing I like about that is it's kind of doing one step as you are doing it as well. So you're getting this cool kind of like auto crop by tilting these around and you can see it never goes past the edges. So if you're trying to get more of an emphasis on that area, I've got that done quite well as well. So we're gonna go with done. And then we can actually go into effects a little bit. I might wanna actually add a little bit more texture to it. I think a vignette on this end would look pretty cool because it's gonna <clears throat> darken those greens a bit more. Let's see what else we can do. We'll go into optics as well. We got that little lens correction. You can see what it's doing there. And if I wanna mess with the, with the um, geometry a little bit as well, we can. And we can kind of see how this kind of looks. We got the rotate. We can kind of flip that and kind of make it a bit more dramatic as well. And there you go. We've got quite a nice little piece here. From the beginning to this, now we've got something super high quality. We've pumped up a lot of the detail. We've deepened a lot of those dark background kind of colors as well, allowing the flower and all of its color, particularly that white, uh, with the beautiful gradations in there. You can see like that to me is something I would almost like 
want to use for a, a project. I love the vibes that you can get from natural photography as well. So that's my first one, and uh, we're going to do another one in a, just a second. All right? We've been asking you guys to collect a ton of videos and photos to give Lightroom a try out and about. Have some fun, take some great shots, and then go on the go or on desktop and make them better. All right, the next one I want to do is um, something really neat. This is with a new project that uh, we have just finished and some of the product photography um, has been taken by <laughs> my clients and they are actually over in Hawaii taking some pictures of the cans that we just produced. And what I'm gonna do is I wanna show off maybe one of them here and let's see what we can do with this one as well. So this is Charmly. It's a really cool new uh, wellness beverage and these are the first samples that we got back and just to get ready for social media and for website and everything else that they're going to use photography on one thing i wanted to do with this was work with the presets and basically find a really good one that we can save and kind of send to my clients they can use lightroom when they are out and on on the go and then that way we can have this like um great filter that they can use at any time to see what would work um, uh, for that to keep a consistent vibe and look. So I'm going to go down to the bottom here and the first thing I thought I saw was the lifestyle or travel. So I'm going to click on the subject travel and then you can see we got a great amount of ones here to start with as well. And what I like about this kind of feature too is I can literally just do the quick kind of check and see which one kind of has the vibe that we're looking for. So I'm going to keep going through here and see. That one looks really great. That's the TR03. And we've got the TR04 as well. What else do we have? TR02. These all look really great. But let's see. I think the one that I'm kind of gearing more towards might be between the TR02 there and the TR04. Ooh, that's a, that's a hard call. I'm gonna go with the TR02 there as well. So I'm gonna click on that little area and let's kind of see maybe because we now have this availability to control the actual preset with a slider, I can see exactly what I'm doing here. Now I wanna zoom in because we do have some fine print there as well, right? So let's say I move this one down a little bit here. We still get that same effect, but I can just make sure that it's not affecting the typography and the readability of these. So when they're used, we can be really good, okay? So I'm gonna hit done there as well. And now I've got kind of a nice new arrangement here. So now I know I can kind of uh, follow up with our client and say, hey, here's a preset that we used. Um, you can even give them just a brief little overlook and maybe video of something like what I'm doing right now. And that way they can do this kind of stuff on the go with their iPhone or their iPad or any smartphone. It's kind of cool, right? All right. So a few other things. Let's see what else we can do. I'm going to go into the effects section here. What if we want to add a little texture to this? So I'm looking at it. I think we've added a little bit of that light airy vibe to it. So if I just bring up the texture a little bit. Now notice too, this is kind of neat. It's kind of allowing me to see the full picture as I'm doing that, but I'm adding just a bit of texture there just to see how it works. The clarity, I can bring that up a bit here. The dehaze, let's see. That is making it more dehazy. I'm gonna keep it probably right about there as well. And for a vignette, we'll give it a just a slight touch. Perfect, I think feathering will help soften it a little bit because it's quite sharp. Amazing, what great photography you can take with mobile devices nowadays, which is really great. And then we'll go to detail. So, sharpening, I can bring this up just a bit here and see how that looks. Everything else looks pretty good. I don't think I have much noise in there. It's looking pretty clear. And noise reduction, I can take this and just give it a little bit more and see that might even catch a few things that I'm not seeing as well. Looking good as well. Geometry wise, I don't think we need to do anything on there. But for me, I really love the way this is looking. Uh, to me, it's a great kind of um, change of the image there from the very beginning you can see we get a very unique overall vibe happening with the, the plants and the leaves in the background and i love the shadowing i think the shadowing in this one really came out quite nice as well um, we got another one here i can mess around with this was a cool one that i found just walking up here and of course here we have a little bit of a uh, trash unfortunately left behind there so what i can do here is with the healing brush here we can see how that works here we've got this area so you can see I just gave it a quick quick little thing here I'm gonna undo that 
and just go back to discard changing and let's get this a little bit more here zoomed in so with the healing brush here let's see what we can do here i'm going to kind of just get this right here boom kind of helps a little bit you can see what we did here we kind of it's sampling from another area but right off the bat if i click done we have removed that piece right from there as well um, this is really neat i think we i just gotten into a conversation the other day with someone about uh, the rings of a tree and you know how this kind of is such a unique history of the tree so as i was walking by and i saw this i was like "Ooh, this might be a good one because unfortunately you really don't see a lot here so can we get a little bit more into the deep details here by just sharpening it up a little bit let's see we can get the radius up a little bit more oh you can already start seeing some really cool stuff here as well noise let's see that probably is kind of adding a little bit more so we want noise we want noise so let's keep that there as well detail here we go let's pump that up a bit more and see contrast as well let's pump that up a little bit more as well so we're getting a few more things in here as well go back up to light i'm going to take the exposure maybe down a bit contrast up a bit highlights get those in a little bit the whites and then the blacks let's move those up a bit so now we're getting almost like automatic detail and contrast in there as well coloring well it's looking a little bit kind of a little bit just boring when it comes to those browns so can we just mess around and see what might help these out a little bit more vibrance looks good saturation looks good look at how much more detail we're getting in there uh, looks great I love that color mix like we did earlier maybe we're missing a few colors I'm just gonna hit the purple and see what happens when we add a little bit more to that and see it kind of complements the yellow quite nicely let's see luminous will go a little bit up as well so there we go I'm gonna click this off and let's take a look and see at the detail here as well look at that we're finding all this new stuff in there that wasn't really there beforehand and we got this really cool unique thing the last thing i want to do as well and this is kind of unique let's see i'm going to go back here and we took a video actually which was kind of neat and i want to see how that looks so this is right here and this is a video i'm going to play as is and i was trying to catch a squirrel that was going up there he's probably up there somewhere in top uh, but i missed him when i filmed it but when i re-looked at this i thought oh it's quite nice it looks really really cool so let's try this look at this presets right there look at that one click from tr06 and look at the richness and detail we got there just by doing it on lightroom we're actually editing video look at this tr10 oh my gosh it just changes the entire view look at this beautiful right now i'm gonna say done on that one because i just love the way that looks but look at this i can go in and say you know what the exposure just needs to be a bit more i want a bit more contrast let's get the highlights down a little bit let's get the black up and the whites maybe around there okay color let's see i can change the temperature Ooh, we can actually make it look a bit more like summer tint Ooh, what a nice change vibrance up a little bit saturation up a little bit and look at what we have done to this entire image we have completely changed the atmosphere the vibe it went from kind of just normal look great but we've added so much color and texture and variety into this it's got a mood now which i really really love so play around with these see what you could do i think this idea of look at this adding vignettes to an actual video how cool is that so i'm going to save this i hope you enjoyed these ones these were great i'm having a blast with this back to the rest of us there Hello, it's me, back in the studio. Nice to see ya. Uh, I wanted to show you what happens when we go from mobile and out on the go and bring it back to desktop. So we were out on the go and I filmed, took all those photos, came back, took a nap, uh, and now I am back in the studio and I have not opened Lightroom yet. So let's go ahead and see what happens when I open Lightroom from being out on the go. So we're gonna open Lightroom here. Everybody cross your fingers, say a prayer to Sensei, Adobe Sensei, give us the power and boom. So what's happened here is it's actually synced all of our photos across the board. Um, it has synced these, oops, there we go, I double clicked too far out. Uh, it has synced these photos so that we can 
uh, edit them if we want. We can double click into this photo and it'll open it. Now, not only did it edit this photo for us, it also has saved all of the syncing that we've done, right? All of the edits that we have made to these photos. So if we click here on the masking, you can see all of our masks are still intact. Um, every single detail that we've made on mobile is converted over to desktop. And I love this because we're able to really have a little more uh, cohesion and a little more uh, refinement on these photos. So something that I'm noticing that wasn't happening on iPad or I didn't see on iPad was that this wall is off, right? It's tilted a little bit. I, I haven't got the perspectives right. Uh, so there's a great tool that we can use um, that I think Nick showed a little bit of uh, that we're going to go over here to the crop and rotate. And what we can do here is we can go ahead and move this so we can straighten it a little bit and that's going to straighten out that wall. So this is great, especially on brick walls when you have a guide, you can see very quickly uh, that you can just straighten that out. Uh, it does look like our perspective is a little bit off. And so if we wanted to, we could find our geometry right here. And instead of doing crops, instead of doing tilts, we can simply go to guided. And right there, it's going to find these lines. So we're gonna hit got it. Um, and I don't know if guided is where we want to go. Uh, let's just do auto and see what happens. All right, it's getting better with that geometry. And I think that we do have a tilt on it as well. So I'm going to go to auto and then I'm going to turn this tilt off. All right, so there, there is no tilt. All right, so let's go ahead and try something other than auto. So coming down here, maybe let's do full and see if that makes it flat for us. thinking about it. All right, still a little bit off. We can come in here and we can do a little bit of tilt. Looks good to me. All right, so something else that we can do is we had our, um, I think we used a color selection to do the masking on this wall. A tool that we didn't look at at all was Lumosity selections. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take a look at the Lumosity uh, and we're going to go to our masking and then click over here on a new mask. And in this new mask, we are going to do luminance, lumosity. Luminance is the word that I wanted there, Andrew. We're gonna do a luminance range. And from here, I'm gonna zoom in and kind of grab this portion right here. So it's just the shadows and it's pulling a lot. So we can extend this to where it grabs more or we can pull it down to where it grabs less. And I do want to really crush those so that we're just picking up those dark shadows. And from there, I do want to pull that saturation down because we didn't want saturation on the wall, right? We want to knock those blacks out. So I'm going to give it a little more uh, exposure here and try not to completely lose those shadows, but still give us a lot of contrast in the image. So I think that that's looking pretty good to me. Uh, so let's move on to another image and I want to refine one more thing real quick. And that is this photo. So this photo, I believe when we were working with it, uh, it kind of looked black and white, but it's not quite as crisp as I want it to be. So what I can do is I'm going to go ahead and show you the difference between texture and clarity because I think that we can do it way better here. Okay, so texture and clarity, uh, basically texture is going to show you the details. So texture is gonna show you the details. If I zoom in here, you can see the gravel, the bark, that's what it's called. And as I pull that down, the bark becomes less. As I pull the texture up, it's going to become more. Oh, I'm still in the masking, there we go. Let's do it on the actual image. So the texture is going to give us the bark. So texture does detail. And clarity is going to give us detail on the larger portions. So texture is for smaller details. Clarity is really for the overall image to increase contrast. So doing before and after, if we don't want the clarity on, you can see that it loses a little bit of that contrast, a little bit of that grit. I like to really pump it up on black and white images because it gives us a really nice, bold, kind of gorgeous contrast. I'm gonna bring the sharpening down. Um, and let's go ahead and see the difference between these and just adding contrast, right? You think, Andrew, you're talking about contrast. Why don't you just add contrast? 
Well, adding contrast here is just going to make the darkers darker and the lighters lighter. It's not gonna give us any uh, clarity or crispness. And adding that clarity, you can see it's not just making it lighter and more contrasty, it's really playing with those gradations between the black and white as well and keeping those grays where we want them. And increasing the texture again is that detail. So it really gives us that sharpness. Um, if you're working in Photoshop, you could use something like a high pass filter would be similar to this. So that's what it looks like. I wanna show you how to do a sepia tone. So let's go ahead and do sepia tone. Uh, over here, we have done a black and white image. Now, you can get around doing a black and white image and make it duotone by using color grading, right? You don't have to put anything on top of it. You can literally just use color grading. So what we're gonna do is scroll down here on this image, and this is one of my favorite hacks, is we're gonna go into color grading, and you see here we have the shadows, we have the midtones, and we have the highlights. So with this type of black and white, we can augment the shadows, we can augment the highlights. We can really play around and change everything that we need to. So let's say that we want to do a sepia tone. We can start to pull this out and you can see what's happening is the shadows, right? The darker shadows are turning into this nice orange. This is really the brightness of that orange. So we can pull it down to make it a really dark sepia tone or pull it up to really kind of make it soft and maybe vintage. So it looks pretty good to me, but I do want to keep the shadows kind of dark. Now, where the magic is going to happen is in the mid-tones. So as I pull the mid-tones into this brown sepia tone, you can see that we're really getting some nice mid-tones. I do want those to be a little bit darker and a little muted. Uh, and you can see they're feeling a little bit too orange. And so I, what I might wanna do is just warm up the shadows and get the shadows a little bit darker. There we go. Now, one more thing, and that is the sky. The sky looks white, and in a sepia tone, we don't want anything to be full on bright white. Um, we do wanna have a little bit of contrast to that. So let's go ahead and start pulling this up, and you can see that our highlights here are now picking up those colors. So let's pull it down just a little bit dark. And as we pull it darker, we'll see it's actually gonna pull that sky down a little bit. Uh, we can use the blending and balance. If we take the blending up, it's going to actually push those colors onto the photo more. If we take it down, it will do less. We want it right in the middle. And the balance is going to be the balance between the two. So it'll kind of fade it. So I do like doing a sepia tone with a little bit of balance uh, to really pull it back and give it just a little bit more of that kind of soft look. Now from here with our color grading set, we can come back up to our light. Maybe we want the whole thing to be a little bit lighter, our highlights in the sky a little bit brighter, and it's gonna keep those tones on, but it also is going to allow us to edit that photo. So if something is not looking quite right, it's probably because the lighting is different on the color grading. So let's go ahead and pull this up a little bit. And you can see we're getting more of that sky. And I think my problem is that my mid-tones are too dark. So let's pull the mid-tones up a little bit. There we go, and we're getting a little bit brighter there, looking good to me. Uh, cool, this is looking good. Let's get a little bit crazy, and I wanna show you um, what we can do maybe with a portrait. So let's do this portrait of, uh, let's do this portrait of our friend, I believe this is Frank. Uh, we've edited this on one of our past episodes, and I wanna show you what you can do with that color grading uh, to get really crazy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into the color grading here, and we're not going to color grade for an effect. We're in a color grade for like, let's do something crazy. So with the shadows, let's do a kind of a psychedelic portrait. I'm gonna pull the shadows into this hot pink, right? We're gonna make it really bright. And in Photoshop, you could do this using a gradient map. Uh, it's the same idea here. So we're going to go ahead and really play around with these colors and these pinks. Uh, pull it out. The highlights, let's do a hot green. I don't want them that bright. All right, that's looking cool. And the mid-tones, let's go ahead and do, we want a warm color. Let's do an orange, let's do like a teal. Ooh, that looks cool. So let's do a teal and then we can pull this up so it's really bright. And this is a great way to do um, some effects. Like if we wanted to do maybe a 3D effect. So all that you need for 3D, right? If that kind of vintage 3D is the red and the blue. 
We could pull the red into the shadows, right? A little bit of reds in those highlights as well. Let's pull those highlights up. And then the mid-tones, we're going to shift to that crazy blue and really blow those out. So you can play around and really create some cool effects. Maybe we want a little bit more of that blue. Ooh, that's looking cool. Actually, let's get, yeah, let's get some mid-tone green in there. Nice. So you can see we do have some grain on there and we do have a little bit of that gradient map kind of pulling over the image. Uh, and that's just a really fun way to play around with these color gradings if you want to do some crazy stuff. Uh, and even with a photo like this, right? This is our lake photo. Uh, I want to give it a vintage look. Super easy. If you think about film, the shadows are always a little bit purple. So I'll pull the shadows into purples. And then the highlights are always a little bit uh, yellow. So we'll grab the highlights, pull them into a little bit yellow. And then to me, the midtones are always a little bit red. So not too much. All right, that looks good. So again, it's super quick. This looks like a photo that was taken in the 70s now, right? Uh, it looks like something from one of my parents' uh, scrapbooks or something. So really easy to play around with that color grading and get really nice effects. Uh, what I like to do is look at photos, look at the darkest part, the lightest part, and the most gray part, and see what colors they are, because it's almost never black. It almost always is color graded, so that those shadows become a different color. Uh, and I'll see you again next week for another live show as we dive into more Lightroom. We're gonna go to a weird screen that's just gonna be my face, but then we'll cut to the outro. Uh, thanks everybody, bye.